our constant mantra is at least reskill yourself, upskill yourself, deep skill yourself, and more importantly, second skill yourself. I really take what Patrick said about what you encourage people, the four skill related thing to reskill, upskill, upskill, <laughs> deep skill, deep skill, second skill, and second skill. Second skill. And the fourth yeah. one is probably the newest yeah. to Singaporeans. I feel strongly about second skilling because in events of uh, peaks and troughs in the economy, you need to go into a new job or move across sectors. Many job obsolescence is one key thing that's happening and there are new jobs created. So the challenge is how to have not just one skill, you may be strong in this particular skill, but this job may go away after time, it may transform. So important to have a second skill so that you get something to fall back on. When we talk about second skill, it's not something which is out of the blue, but something perhaps you could be very passionate about. For example, you may be working in the banking sector, a very good relationship manager, but because of financial downturns, you may have lost that job. But because of your ability to relate with people, you may have very good social skills, very high EQ. You may be able to fit into the job in the social service sector, which is actually has high demand for, for people and professionals. If you pick up a skill whilst you are still in banking line and have skills perhaps maybe in counselling, psychology or outreaching to people, you may be able to go to those sectors which actually, for example, like healthcare and social services. Oh, actually, I just tell people, don't worry, because we always have jobs in the hotel industry as well. As long as you come with the right attitude, we can train you and there'll always be a job for you. When you refer to second skilling, are you talking about importance for those who are at danger of losing their job? Or anybody or everybody should be second skilling? I'm particularly concerned about those 40 and above, who I call the mature workers. If you look at the employment data through the decades, they are vulnerable. When they get unemployed, they take a far longer time to rejoin back into the workforce. The retrenchments that we are seeing, you, you'll see more and more of this particular age group being affected. So I think even more impetus for this group of workers to second skill themselves. We recognise that some of them may have problem building this a second career, not at the entry level, but at the mid-level. So what we did in preparation for this uncertainty in the economy, we came up with a program known as a Career Support Program, CSP. Under the Career Support Program, basically, we are encouraging employers to give more opportunities to these mid-career PMETs for them to join their organisations, not at the entry level, but mid-level, with a salary of at least more than 4000 So under this CSP, if a person joins a company at a starting pay of between 4000 and above, the CSP will co-fund the salary for up to one year. The idea is that during this one year, this mature PME will have a chance to get to know more about the company and show the company that he's able to add value. At the same time, it's for the company to also have a better assessment of the person. So the idea of the CSP is to bring them together so that both parties can give each other a one-year period to adapt to each other, hopefully find each other to be suitable and move on from there. I would say that that is one of the initiatives, but obviously there's a lot more we can do. But at the end of the day, they themselves must be prepared to learn new skill, double skill, and at the same time be employable, be adaptable, and be reskillable. And also the good part about it is this spirit of lifelong learning. Because you may be in and out of jobs more frequently. It is a very volatile, very fluid environment. So with this added boost and added support, so it's a whole process. If you notice Skills Future Credit does not have an end age, yes. uh, meaning many of the seniors can also take on and learn new skills, skills which they Previously, may not have the time or ability to do it, but now they can embark on those. Lifelong learning is absolutely more relevant than it was, but equally, lifelong employment is no longer as relevant. Yes. So I think the question is, how do you reskill, reinvent people, our employees at all levels, so that they can actually do the jobs of tomorrow as they come along? And for those who are not actually thinking about moving to a different job, when they go for skills upgrading, some workers may expect that because now they're more qualified, they're better qualified, that they deserve higher pay or better job positions. Is it realistic for that kind of expectations? I think at the end of the day, it's a, the link between skill and job. So if I can use the hotel sector as a good illustration. In the hotel sector, most workers were single skilled workers. If I work in the front desk, front desk. If I work in the F&B, F&B. Housekeeping, housekeeping. About three to five years ago, in line with this manpower lean movement, the union, the NTUC, together with the hotel industry, embarked on a program to multi-skill the workers. One hotel took the lead and they came up with a program whereby each individual worker 
will now be triple skilled rather than single skilled. For example, a worker will learn to handle front desk, F&B and housekeeping. And what they did was uh, during the day, they followed the peak. Because in the hotel, certain time of the day, the peak demand is in the F&B. In certain time of the day, at the front desk and housekeeping. So what they did was they acquired three skills. They become very flexible. And on any given day, because they're able to do multiple jobs, their value add to the company has gone up. And guess what? Their salary went up by more than 50%. And their employability, I'm sure, went up. Exactly. In fact, the hotel management told me that all these workers have become highly marketable. Yeah. Because in any hotel, these are the three core operations. Just recently, I asked for an update. I was told that this has become more or less a new norm in our hotel sector in Singapore. I think at the end of the day, the skill must be translated into so-called higher value add. The responsibility to create this higher value is not rest with the workers alone, not with the union alone, but a lot come from the employer. For the construction industry, when you talk about workers, there's already some processes in place. Double skilling is one of them. And I think the industry is slowly trying to find a direction where we are redesigning our jobs. One of the greatest things we have done is design for safety to attract more people. So the industry is moving forward. We are looking at innovation, volumetric construction. There's one going on now in NTU, whereby a whole container structure is being built at the factory, shipped out and then just put on like a Lego set. All these innovations are in place. And that's where we need really skilled people. And that's where I think there's a big opportunity for Singaporeans to come in. Because these are exportable skills. Because our neighbouring countries have not jumped on the bandwagon yet. Not every company, not every industry will be able to transform overnight. So what is encouraging is that we're seeing more industries have embarked on that journey of change. So like the case of this hotel example that I mentioned, you start with one hotel as an early adopter. The success, the benefits being witnessed will actually encourage more to follow. So in sectors with enough pioneers, we hope that we can go through this change process as quickly as possible. SMEs employ about 60% of the workforce and a lot of SMEs tend to be late adopters. Well, that's because of our structure. We are already too lean. All of us are bony, you know? so where else do you go? the Lean Enterprise Development Scheme, which was the program that the minister started last year. And I think going forward, you'll see a lot more SMEs that look to work with coining smart technology, but really using technology to work and interact with people. So we had this pest control company. They've actually now built a command center. They've also equipped their pest control workforce with smart technology, with live cameras, with live comms. And through the command center, at the HQ, they're able to communicate with the workers, find out exactly what's going on, and solve the problem or send reinforcement at that very moment. They also use a combination of technology like drones. Once you see the first batch of early adopters take up this technology, then you will see the rest following. And together with that, we need to move mindsets, move value systems, upgrade human resource practices, and I think we will be able to then successfully transit. Mm -hmm.